Hello, so this is the first time I'm going to try this. It's sort of a let's learn, let's code, let's play sort of uh, thing. And this time it's going to be on NTSC video. I have some electronics, I have my computer there, and I've got a little television. And uh, I'll be first explaining some things about NTSC, and then we'll be going through a little bit of code that, that actually does produce some NTSC and play with a little bit. We'll go into how NTSC works in color, and then we'll go into the actual other device where we do the color. So with me, I have a clone of the AVR Minecraft microscope slide thing. And uh, this one, the only real difference here is that it actually has uh, the video out stuff populated, which is just an op amp and four resistors. I have my little uh, programmer here. This is the clone of the... Uh, Lady Ada, tiny ISP, it's just a lot smaller. And uh, I have here the board that uh, I use to make the color NTSC video, and we'll be using this one substantially later. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'm going to just make sure that we have a functional thing. Let's uh, aim it at the television there. And I'm going to go plug in. Up, oh, up, oh, I guess that's backwards. And uh, looks like we at least have a starting platform we can go with. Okay, so uh, here we are now, my screen capture. And uh, I have a terminal, I have uh, some source code here that I can play with, and I've got a couple tabs open in my browser. And uh, really, uh, let's get started by going over what this whole NTSC thing is. So when you look at your television, what you're actually seeing is the number of scan lines. The, the idea behind this is televisions up until recently were cathode ray tubes. So they could only actually project a dot. And that dot would scan across the screen from left to right, from left to right, from left to right, and on down the screen just like how you read a book. When it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. But uh, you need to know a little bit. So the television doesn't automatically know, oh, this is where all the pixels go. It could get the picture wrong. It could be slid to the right. It could be looped around. It could be half the top and the middle and, and whatnot. So the idea behind a full NTSC frame is that we send an H sync, a horizontal sync. And this is a kind of unusual pattern of uh, ups and downs and signals. And then we send the data of the lines. So this 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 line right here that says, okay, go back to the beginning, we actually have to send something special, and then we go send line data. But uh, the line data isn't just pixels, we actually have to know something about it. So in order to look at, say, a specific line, what we end up having is we have a sync pulse at the beginning of that line, saying this is the start of a line. Then we have this little section right here, this blank. And what this does is it says, okay, I need to start sending pixel data now. And that consists of a breezeway, a color port burst, which we're not going to be covering in this part yet, and a back porch. So for monochrome, it's just a, a small change from the sync pulse to this blanking. Then we send picture data. Picture data is just the intensity at that point on the screen. So this area right here represents one line of, of pixels, or not really even pixels, just image. And if the value of the voltage going into the little yellow plug is down here, of the, the signal, then that means it's going to be black. If the value's up here, it's going to be white. So if you go and you start your frame and it's black, 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 and oh hey look, a stair step up here to white, what you're going to see is it's going to start off dark on the left side of the screen, and it's going to step brighter and brighter and brighter to white all the way on the right side. Then, at the end of the frame, we have to have this front porch here, and we go back to a sync pulse to go to the next line. So this just represents one line. Now, I've been talking about these different areas, this sync, this blank, this black, and this white. Well, what are these? So these are actually relative signal values. And while NTSC doesn't specify too closely exactly what voltages these should be, it's generally best to keep them within about one volt peak to peak. So the idea would be, at one level, this negative 40, percent, we would uh, say down here, okay, this is sync. Then we have another level, which is blank. Then a little bit higher than that is black. You actually can send a blanking for the black, and most televisions will accept it. That's what I do on many of my projects. Uh, but these are actually different. The idea is that you have at least some headroom between black and, oh my gosh, there's going to be some disaster. Above that, we have this white. And so 100% of full signal is, is bright white, 
0% is black, and it's kind of grayscale in between. So that's why it starts off black, and it gets brighter, brighter, brighter until it's white on the right side. The length of one of these video lines is 63.55 microseconds. That's not very long, but it's completely doable on pretty much any modern 8-bit or 16-bit processor. If you're going to be spending your time and you know actually making your code run, it, it a level that it can pull that off with. Probably not going to work on a Raspberry Pi, but you know, just just make sure you're not having an OS in the way of you talking to these data pins, and you're fine. So we know what a, the whole frame looks like, and we know what a line of the frame looks like. But what constitutes the frame? Well, a frame is 242 video lines, and it gets updated at 59.97 hertz. So that's 59.97 frames per second, or we can just say 60. The reason for the dot .97 is kind of an unusual thing with the way that it had to be broadcasted. Let's not worry about that. Then we also have 20 lines worth of H-Sync. So back up here, we have 20 lines of these H-Sync things here. Then we have 242 video lines. Now you may have heard 480i. Well, wait a minute, I know that my television is 480 lines. How is that? And it's because you can interlace. You can have 242 even lines, then you can go back and start the whole frame over, except this time only fill in the odd lines. This is great and all, and it's, it's interesting, it gives you higher resolution, but we're not going to be covering that here. It's, it's a little bit complicated, and it's just not worth really going into. You can read more about that later. So, with the AVR and with many other processors, all we have is digital out. All we can really do is we can say zero volts to five volts or disconnected at, at best. And uh, we don't have the ability to say, I want this output to be 2.3 volts. So we have to kind of use resistors to help us get the voltages we want. So I have V1 and V2 and a 100 ohm resistor and a 200 ohm resistor. That means that V1, because it has a lower resistance, will impact V out more strongly, and V2, since it has a 200 ohm resistor, will impact V out less strongly. So you can see here I've made a little table. If you have them both at zero volts, of course the output's going to be zero volts because it's not getting any voltage from anywhere. And if they're both five volts, then the output's going to be five volts because there's nothing pulling it down. But it gets interesting in the middle, where if we make V1 5 volts and V2 0 volts, well now we get 3.3 volts. Or if V1 is 0 volts and V2 is 5 volts, we get 1.6 volts. So by being a little bit more creative with the way in which we hook our resistors up, we can have uh, this more complicated network here, this better network, that has V1, V2, a resistor to 5 volts and a resistor to ground, and if we keep in mind that we can also disconnect V1 or V2, we get this nice little table here of when N1 is 0, N1 is 5, or N1 is disconnected, and N2 is 0, disconnected, or 5. And uh, the idea is that if they're both 0, then it's going to be as low as it can be, which is the sink, which is negative 40. If, say, N1 is disconnected and N2 is 0, or N2 is 5, or, or whatever, then we're going to be able to generate this blanking or white. And this is really useful because now, with uh, N1 only being either zero or disconnected, we can generate all of the different signals that we would need. And uh, this is particularly useful because of the way that the AVR has its SPI. It's worth noting that all of the ports on the AVI, ex AVR, except for the, uh, the analog in ports, are actually tri-state. So all of the ports can either be 5 volts, 0 volts, or disconnected. The SPI bus on the AVR is pretty neat though. It allows you to load up a byte and then shift that byte out one bit at a time in an automated fashion. So I can send one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits without any code at all doing anything except what it has to do up front. And this makes it possible to go do other things or to be able to send more data more quickly or more pixels more quickly. There's a neat little caveat, and that's that any time that you're sending this data, this MISO pin must be undriven. So we can send data on MOSI, master out, slave in, and we receive data on MISO, M-I-S-O, uh, master in, slave out, um, 
and we can ignore this if we'd like, we can drive it low when we're not using MOSI. So if they're both low, well, that right here will create a sync that's 0 and 0. And if N1 is disconnected, so this is if MISO is disconnected and N2 is connected and it's 0, then we're sending a black or blinking, blanking, sorry. And if N1, the MISO, is disconnected and N2, which is the master out, master out slave in, is 5 volts, then we have white. So with this simple network here, we can create both syncing, we can create uh, syncing, blanking, blacking, and white. And that gives us a black and white picture, or the ability to make one if we can get the timing just right. This is great for text, but not for color. So right now, in this part of the demo, we're only going to be covering text.